is old Leviske, he said in a melancholy voice. You've grown. Hazel started to tremble. At the base of the stairs, the cement stoop cracked under the man's feet. A glittering stone popped up from the concrete like the earth had spit out a watermelon scene. The man looked at it, unsurprised. He bent down. Don't! Hazel cried. It's cursed! He picked up the stone, a perfectly formed emerald. Yes, it is, but not for me. So beautiful, worth more than this building, I imagine. He slipped the emerald in his pocket. I'm sorry for your fate, child. I imagine you hate me. Hazel didn't understand. The man sounded sad, as if he were personally responsible for her life. Then the truth hit her. A spirit in silver and black who fulfilled her mother's wishes and ruined her life? Her eyes widened. You... You are my... He cupped his hand under her chin. I am Pluto. Life is never easy for my children, but you have a special burden. Now that you're thirteen, we must make provisions. She pushed his hand away. You did this to me, she demanded. You cursed me and my mother. You left us alone. Her eyes stung with tears. The, this rich white man in a fine suit was her father. Now that she was thirteen, he showed up for the first time and said he was sorry. You're evil, she shouted. You ruined our lives. Pluto's eyes narrowed. What has your mother told you, Hazel? Has she never explained her wish or told you why you were born under a curse? Pluto's eyes narrowed. Hazel was too angry to speak, but Pluto seemed to read the answers on her face. No, he sighed. I suppose she wouldn't. Much easier to blame me. What do you mean? Pluto sighed. Poor child. You were born too soon. I cannot see your future clearly, but someday you will find your place. A descendant of Neptune will wash away your curse and give you peace. I fear, though, this is not for many years. Hazel couldn't follow any of that, but she could respond. Pluto held out his hand. A sketch pad and a box of colored pencils appeared in his palm. I understand you enjoy art and horseback riding, he said. These are for your art. As for the horse, his eyes gleamed. That you'll have to manage yourself. Now I must speak with your mother. Happy birthday, Hazel. He turned and headed up the stairs, just like that, as if he checked Hazel on his to-do list and had already forgotten about her. Happy birthday. Go draw a picture. See you in another 13 years. She was so stunned, so angry, so turned down confused that she could she just stood paralyzed at the base of the steps. She wanted to throw down the colored pencils and stomp on them. She wanted to charge after Pluto and kick him. She wanted to run away, find Sammy, steal a horse, leave town and never come back. But she couldn't do any of those things. Above her, the apartment door closed and Pluto stepped inside. Hazel was still shivering from his cold touch, but she crept up the stairs to see what he would do. What would he say to Queen Marie? Who would speak back, Hazel's mother or the awful voice? When she reached the doorway, Hazel heard arguing. She peeked in. Her mother seemed back to normal, screaming and angry, throwing things around the parlor while Pluto tried to reason with her. Marie, this is insanity, he said. You'll be far beyond my power to protect you. Protect me? Queen Marie yelled. When have you ever protected me? Pluto's dark suit shimmered as if the souls trapped in the fabric were getting agitated. You have no idea, he said. I kept you alive, you and the child. My enemies are everywhere among the gods and men. Now with the war on, it will only get worse. You must stay where I can. The police think I'm a murderer, Queen Marie shouted. My clients want to hang me as a witch. And Hazel, her curse is getting worse. Your protection is killing us.